Well, it's Michael again, back here in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is stunningly beautiful as always here. A couple things I want to discuss. We are getting close to what I think is probably the end of uh, end of this cycle. Uh, everything appears to be just absolutely wonderful. There are an awful lot of things under the surface that uh, are starting to roll over. Of course, uh, auto uh, automobiles, as you, as you know, many of the, uh, the automobile plants are starting to uh, starting to slow down and actually starting to close. Uh, we we're out looking for a Corvette, and uh, they said that the Corvette plant is closed for ten weeks. And they said, well, you know, there's such demand that they close the plant for ten weeks. And I'm thinking to the salesman, I'm thinking. You know, you have demand and you close the plant. That doesn't sound right to me. Uh, we were out looking at cars. We looked, uh, my wife and I were looking at a uh, car for her. We went into the Lexus dealership. Uh, we could go Sunday, you know, like one o'clock in the afternoon. It was a beautiful day. It wasn't raining. It wasn't cold. It wasn't snowing. Uh, we walked into the Lexus, a beautiful, beautiful Lexus uh, dealership. We were the only ones there. Only ones. Must have been like 20 salespeople on the floor. We were the only ones there. So uh, then we go to the, to the Chevrolet dealership and looked at uh, looked at Corvettes and um, you know I think there were three people there. So uh, and then you you look at the statistics and uh, uh, a lot of cars are it just uh, the dealers are stuffed to the gills with cars and and the and the manufacturers are slowing down. So these are just these are just symptoms. And you also start seeing that. Uh, uh, the last people, you know, most of the cars are financed. So uh, the the sales that are made now are to uh, high risk clients. They're uh, they're subpar. So uh, you know, when you when you get to the point where the only people that you can sell to are the people who really should be buying a car, you're at the end of the cycle. So um, and a couple things else has happened. You, you know, uh, um, I, I follow a lot of others' research. I'm I'm not a researcher myself. You know, I'm a, I, I compile things and I'm a writer and we do some. We do some uh, consulting, but uh, we listen to people who really seem to know. Uh, Lakshman Akuthan from uh, Economic Cycle Research Institute has just had a wonderful track record. I mean, they're just absolutely terrific. Uh, they said uh, last November that we were going to have a, a, a cyclical upturn in a structural downturn. So we have structural problems worldwide, and of course it's the debt. You know, we have more debt than we've ever, I mean, we, we didn't learn our lesson in 2008, 2009 uh, downturn. Uh, we actually have more debt now uh, than when we started. I mean, and we're talking trillions and trillions. I, I understand that um, China spent $8 trillion last quarter propping up their economy, $8 trillion. You know, they borrowed that money. So uh, this is the debt that, that's piling up. And of course, that's, a, that's another sign. But uh, Lakshman Akutan has said that uh, last November we had a cyclical upturn in a structural downturn, which means that we have these structural problems that aren't going away. Uh, and of course, uh, we did. We, we knew that. It popped. Trump is taking credit for it all. Uh, and he may have actually had part of it, but I think it was already baked in the cake because the, the cycles had already turned and, and were popping. But these are, these are just small, short-term cycles. They were like eight or nine months. And uh, we're done. We're as good as it gets. So we're starting to roll over. And uh, Lakshman Akutan is, is warning. I mean, you can you can go look at his in good ECRI and, and look at his uh, his interview. He's on Bloomberg a lot. I mean, he's a very very smart guy. And he's they, they predict uh, a downturn. Now a confirming one. You know, just because he says that, of course, uh, we, we try and get others uh, that are respected. Martin Armstrong as well. Martin Armstrong of uh, Armstrong Economics. Uh, God, here's a guy that's got a tremendous uh, track record. He says stock market is going to double from here, uh, which, it, which it may. But he says you may also have a downturn in the meantime, so he's just not quite sure what's going on. But his model shows a downturn. And the model shows a downturn from like uh, middle of November. Actually, I think he's calling it. He actually has a date on it. I think it's like November 24th, and it starts going down until uh, May of, uh, of the 2018. We get a, a three-month reprieve, and then we're down for about a year and a half. So that would go along with my with my double correction in uh, in our real estate uh, in our real estate cycle, which 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 we have in our research. So um, these are confirming these are confirming. Uh, aspects as well as um, um, you know Charles Nenner has been out uh, went to cash in July. I mean he's very very conservative. You know he's to the point where he'd rather not make money than lose money. 
So uh, he has all his clients been out of the market. And of course, uh, Walter Zimmerman is expecting uh, uh, problems. You know, he said that uh, I talked with him November 4th, right before the election. He told me that no matter who won the election, whether it was Clinton or uh, or Trump, uh, we were going to have a rally in, in the stock market. So uh, and then he uh, went further on. And, I, you know, here I'm going from memory, but I think he told me that his maximum top was 2610 on the standard and poor's. And of course, we've hit 2582. So we're like one tenth of 1% away from his top. Um, and you have a lot of these um, people who really are, are in the business of telling what stocks and bonds to buy are telling you to get out of the market. So it's not to their best interest. I mean, there's, there's no personal gain by telling you to get out of the market. You know, they're telling you to get out of the market uh, because they think you should. I mean, here's, here's Charles Leno. They make their money by telling you what stocks and bonds to buy, and they're telling you don't buy any stocks and bonds. You know, go to cash. Well, you know, you have to really pay attention to that. So uh, we are paying attention to that. So I think that, uh, you, you know, my clients, we are already two uh, uh, core holdings. Uh, we have sold anything that was not uh, was not a very very uh, good piece of property. Anything that uh, anything that had high debt or was badly located or you know, needed some work that we didn't want to do or was tough to, to rent for one reason or another. We didn't like the property. We've gotten rid of those. So we're down to core holdings. So we're sitting in a very nice cash position. You should be as well. Uh, you should. Uh, we think that. Uh, or I shouldn't say we. I think that we are going to have a. Uh, uh, very, very good opportunity to buy things at a, at a little better price. I do think that in the, in the cycles that we're looking at, that the outliers, and we're talking about six, seven years from now, maybe eight years from now, we're going to see prices significantly higher than what we have. We're also going to see much higher interest rates, but the properties are going to be significantly higher. Now, you might be ten, paying $10 for a, a gallon of gas or you know, eight dollars for a loaf of bread. I, I, I don't know what the what it will, but the, all the cycles they do that. So, and they're showing us that we have some pretty big outliers. So, in the meantime, we're not too terribly concerned. Uh, we went to cash, and we're really thinking that we're going to be buying some, um, get some really good buys. So, we're looking for next year or the year afterwards. It's going to take a lot of courage. We've talked about there's a, there's a couple of courage points in your portfolio that I want to talk to you. That's the reason for this video. You're going to need courage to buy when everyone else is selling, when everything else looks awful, when business is really terrible and prices have dropped. I mean, I, I remember buying properties and, and thinking, God, this is a fabulous buy. I mean, how can you pass this up and going back to my office and having the salespeople there say, oh my God, you're crazy. You know, you know, what's wrong with you? And he said, guess yourself, you wonder if you're doing the right thing. I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you when, uh, but the always, Always, the problem I have made when I am, when we are in these buying opportunities, is that I get scared and I don't buy enough, and that has always been the problem. You are going to have a buying opportunity that's going to be generational coming to you, which means you have to survive between now and then to take advantage of, of the uh, the property. So we have gone and winnowed out, and we're down to core holdings. It's, we're in the lifeboat, so we're properties that are going to just. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, and uh, whatever happens, we're going to be in great shape. We're in good cash position. You should be as well. Now, the other courage point is now. You've done really wonderful in the stock and bond market. Stocks have just performed beautifully. They've just gone up and up and up. And even when things look bad, they, they went up. But you had all the central banks, you know, they were buying $2 trillion dollars worth of stocks when no one else was. They wouldn't allow the market to go down. They've all said they're stopped buying. By April of next year, there's not going to be a central bank buying anything. And the Fed's already started. They're going to start removing liquidity at $10 billion a month. We've talked about this. So it's going to take enormous courage now to go ahead and start selling some of your portfolio. You don't have to sell the whole thing. You can say, well, okay, I want to still have a holdings. What I'm telling you is that the risk is so high and the gain so low that it just doesn't make sense to do that. But I, you know, and I, but I understand that you know, people are going to say, well, what if you're wrong? I miss all this gains in the, in the stock market. 
yes, you do miss. If the market goes up another 100 or 200 points, you're going to miss that. Um, but let me tell you that the real estate market is doing well, too. So if the stock market uh, keeps going, the real estate market is going to keep going, too. It's just that our real estate market has such a much longer horizon. You know, the risk is so much lower in, in the real estate than it is in the stocks. So even if you make a mistake and you say, well, okay, I didn't uh, do well in the stock market, you're going, to do, you're going to do well in the real estate market. You know, our properties are going up. We're, we're, getting, we're getting enormous gains. Let, let, let me just do this quick. We're running out of time here, so I, I want to do this. I want, I want you to understand you should take half of your money out of the market and go to cash with it. Of that cash, you should probably talk to your financial advisor. You're welcome to call me, and we will we can discuss what's best for you, what's going to be suitable for you. I can't tell you what to buy unless I know who you are and, and what your needs are. So, um, you know, we really need to know who you are before we can do much about that. But let me say, you know, ask me if it's prudent to take some of your profits. You have great profits off the market. Why don't you capture your profits, and then you can reallocate those, and maybe you want to buy something now. Uh, that's going to give you a good cash flow. That's going to mitigate any downturn. Downturn at Jeff. That's going to take courage to do that. So, um, and then of course we'll put that money to work. You know, we, we cash flow. We get uh, we get a monthly income going uh, coming through. Uh, if we put a little we put a little debt on the property, we, you know, we're very very conservative. You know, we're not one of these that uh, leverage much. So maybe we put half or two thirds of uh, of debt on. So uh, it's pretty pretty you know pretty uh, pretty conservative. You know, everyone knows what a, a mortgage is. We will put a really low mortgage on the property. Let your tenant pay the mortgage off. How cool is that? And of course, each and every month you get a principal balance reduction. You get a cash flow. And then let me just just let me just I'm gonna use twenty percent because twenty percent is easy, you know. So for our math, if you put twenty percent down on a property and you get a three percent appreciation for the year, now here we're in Phoenix. We've done three percent every year for like forever. But of course, we had a couple of bad years where we didn't do so well. You know, we've made up for those, but uh, that's always possible. So I want to make sure that you understand that you can sometimes do it. But if we only, if you put twenty percent down and you only get a three percent appreciation, which means you buy a property for a hundred and it goes to one hundred and three, you know that's pretty conservative. So if it goes to one hundred and three thousand dollars, you buy one for two hundred and it goes to two hundred six. So and you put twenty percent down, you have earned fifteen percent appreciation on your money, capital gain. Just like buying Apple goes up in price, except ours is going up 15% on a 3% price increase. Plus, you're going to get cash flow. So typically, we get 5% cash flow. So you're 20%. And you get principal reduction. You know, your tenants are paying your loans off for you. And that's 3 to 4%. So just on a 3% appreciation, your total return is somewhere in the, in the low 20s. Are you getting that in the stock market? Probably not. So uh, that so that's the downside. That'd be the downside, you know. Well, if I we go into the stock market and I lose my, you know, I lose this upside in the stock market. Well, you pick it up in the real estate market in spades. You know, you'll you'll do really really well. So listen, takes a little bit of courage. Think this through. You may be at the top of the market. Why not take some money out of off the table? Just take some money off the table. You got you got profits. Take some of your profits off the table and go to cash for a little bit. And if things start going bad, call me, you know, because you may want to, you want, want a lifeboat and we'll, we'll get something. But I'm, I'm telling you that you are going to have the opportunity of a lifetime to make as much money as you ever wanted. So listen, my very best to you. This is Michael in Scottsdale, Arizona. It is this, uh, October 30th, 2017. And it's good to, goodbye for now. Bye-bye now.